Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. Come on in, come on in. Hallelujah. We're getting ready for another powerful Bible study this evening. And uh, I want you to get your pen and paper and highlighters and your Bible. You're going to need all that. Amen. Hallelujah. So come on in. We're going to be talking about what keeps us. Amen. Because something's keeping us. Something is holding back the son of perdition. <laughs> you know, the Antichrist. There's a spirit of Antichrist here. But something is holding back all of that evil. But tonight we want to focus on what's keeping us. Amen. And there is something keeping us. So we want to invite you to come on in to the broadcast this evening. We want you to share the broadcast with others. Let's get them online. They need to hear this. You know, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And so, um, you, you know, it's, it's so important that we take out time to ferret out the scriptures and the truth because the, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to lead us into all the truth that we need to know to be victorious and overcomers. Amen. So this evening, we're going to talk about what keeps us. And so we want you to share the broadcast again. Let's get others on. And we probably going to get right on into it because, you know, I could be long, but I'm not that long winded. Amen. I could be long. Praise the Lord. So let's see where I'm going to start at tonight. I think I'll start with this. Um, what keeps us? What keeps us? You ought to write that down in the chat room. What keeps me? And we're going to explore that tonight. You got to make it personal. What keeps me? What has kept me all these years? And of course, I know you made some mistakes. That's why we have repentance. That's why 1 John 1 9 says, if you confess your sins, God's faithful and just to not only forgive you, but to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. So we're looking at what personally, what keeps you? You know, I, I've, I've been kept 40 years. I've been a Christian. Amen. Made a few mistakes along the way. I repent. Boy, when I find out I done messed up, I fess up. You ought to write that in the chat room. When I mess up, I fess up. That way you can stay kept. Amen. So we want to, um, first of all, I want to say that uh, taking God at his word and making it our own keeps us. Let me say that again. Taking God at his word and then incorporating it into our life. That will keep you. See, if you want to be kept, you will be kept. Amen. You know, people talking about I fell into sin. No, you fall into ditches. You preconceived, intentionally sinned. You know, you didn't, her phone number just didn't appear in your phone. You asked her for that number. <laughs> you smiled at her. You looked at her. Come on now. Amen. Amen. You don't fall into sin. You fall in the ditches. Sin, in most cases, is premeditated. So we're asking the question, what keeps us? I know what keeps me. Amen. I love the Lord. I don't want to disappoint him. I want to honor him. And I'm not going to let anybody move me off my spot. Now, they tried. The devil tried to nudge me off my spot. But I ain't moving. Amen. If I, and if he does nudge me a little bit, I'm getting back on my spot. I'm telling him I'm going to bind him up, render him ineffective, and I'm getting back on my spot. Amen. 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 Okay, so what keeps us personal? Taking God at his word and making it our own. And you know, there's a responsibility. There's, there's an authority that the believer must exercise. 
The reason why we're on this falling world or in this falling world is because Adam didn't exercise his authority because God had given him dominion over the planet. And he let Satan come in in the guise of a serpent because he was the most subtle and cool beast. You know, man, it, it must have been something back then when Adam was going to talk and, and the serpent or the snake, however you want to call it, he must have been a cool dude because it says he was the most subtle of all of them. Which means, to me, now, I, I, I don't know. God's got the answers when I, when I see him face to face. Uh, I guess they did talk. The animals did talk. Amen. And so I guess it was normal for them to hold on to a conversation with animals, because he was talking, a snake was talking, and we know the devil was behind it. And so, but the point is, I don't care who the devil's talking to, I don't care what he says to us, we have the authority to resist him. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourself therefore under God, resist the devil, and he'll flee, he'll run in terror. But you have to be submitted. So what we're talking about, what's keeping us? We're submitted to the word. We're making God's word as it's, as if it's our own. And it is. Amen. Taking them as a, at his word and making it our own. And basically, that's renewing your mind. So when I was putting this together, a lot of things came up in my spirit. First, I want to go to Job 22, 28 in the Amplified. Job some of y'all is spelled J-O-B, job, amen. Some of you need to get a job. <laughs> Job twenty two twenty eight 28 says, and it starts off letting us know that we have the authority. You know, once again, it's 168 hours in a week. We thank God for those who are on the broadcast this evening because that means that you are studying to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So you're taking time to find out, you know, more about God, how the kingdom works, and why you've been kept all these years. You know, once again, I've been kept 40 years. Amen. My, my, my wife even kept me 40 years. She ain't get rid of me. So if she kept me, you know, the Lord going to keep me because he loved me more than she loved me. <laughs> okay, so Job 22, 28 says, you shall. See, you know, once again, we've been given the opportunity, the privilege, and we have the uh, dominion right to do certain things. So he's saying, you shall also decide. So what are you deciding on a daily basis? Do you want to be kept across the board in every area of your life? Yes. You shall also decide. And decree a thing. Amen. You got to decree. So listen, devil, I render you ineffective around here. Devil, get out of my body. Sickness, get out of my body. I'm decreeing and declaring that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm decreeing, declaring no weapon formed against me prosperous. So that's what's keeping me, the word. The words. Listen, let me just, you shall also decide and decree a thing, and what's going to happen after you decree it? It shall be established for you. Amen. All my needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If I decree that on a consistent basis, get it in my heart, get fully persuaded, it will be established unto me. Now, it's not may not be established the first time you do it because you don't really, you're really not fully persuaded on it. You and, and we're going to get into some some uh, scriptures tonight to let you know how much God loves you and how we have to decree and declare what He told us to decree and declare. That's what it's saying. You got to decree and, and declare, and of course. This is in line with the word. Amen. We're not outside of God. We're not outside of Genesis to Revelation. And sometimes you can go back to the maps, from Genesis to the maps. Amen. So 
So you shall also decide to create a thing, and it shall be established, and it shall be established, and it shall be established. Amen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's established. That's an established fact. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's an established fact. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That is an established fact, not on my own strength, but in the strength of heaven. Amen. On the strength, on the strength of the word. You see, it's on the strength of the word. So you're going to decide and decree a thing and it shall be established to you. In the light of God's favor, amen, we are favor rights. God loved us so much and he's favored us. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways, amen. So, you know, once again, the onus is on us to do something, amen. You can't just sit back and let things just happen without, you know, the, the devil going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge him back with the word of God because that's what's keeping me. You know, um, God was telling Moses to tell the children of Israel in uh, Deuteronomy, it was God that allowed you to go through the wilderness, humbled you, caused you to be hungry, allowed you to be hungry, but then he fed you. Amen. See, God, he, you know, whatever test of trial we go through, God's going to get us out, and that's what's going to keep us. He says, you, you, your clothes and your shoes didn't even wear out. Man, that's Old Testament. We got New Testament. Okay, I want to go to Psalm 139 for those who have just come in. We're talking about what keeps us and taking God at his word and making it our own. That's what keeps us. We become insulated. It's like I tell people about the 91st Psalm. I insulate myself with that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, and in him do I trust. Amen. I'm insulated with that. I, his angels have charge over me. I'm insulated. I believe that. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand, but it doesn't come now in my dwelling. I believe that. So that's what keeps us insulating ourselves with the word. Okay, Psalm, I'm gonna read Psalm 139. We're gonna kind of go through that. And I'm I'm reading this out of the Passion Translation. Psalm 139, verse 1. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. I want you to get that. God know everything about you. Amen. Now, you might be able to hide some stuff from me, but you can't hide it from him. You might be able to fake it with me, but you can't fake it with him. He knows what's in your heart. He says, listen, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul. And you understand my every thought. Get this, before it even enters my mind. Um, in Psalm 139, the Passion Translation, verse 3 and 4 says, You are so inti intimately aware of me. Lord, you read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. Ooh, hallelujah. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. Isn't that good? This is how um, concerned God is about us. And he's going to give us some keys on how to be kept if you want to be kept. Amen. We are his prized possession. He saved the best for last. He created the stars the plants, the animals, divided the day and the night. Bam, then he put man and woman on the scene. He said, listen, I want y'all to be like, like me, be little guys. I want you to control this planet. I want you to dominate it. I want you to replenish 
it when things run out. I'm giving you everything you need. I've given you seed that produces after its own kind. So, and then uh, God is really saying, just work it, baby, work it. Write, it. write it down in the chat room. Work it, baby, work it. Work what God give you, and that's how you're going to be kept. You got to work it. You got to decide. Then you got to decree. You have to do something. Think Romans 6 says, let not, which means you have the ability, you have the control. Let not sin reign in your mortal bodies. Amen. You got more control than you give yourself credit for. Listen to this. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the uh, Psalm 139, Passion Translation, verse 6, verse 5. You going into my future to prepare the way. This is how we are being kept. Listen, if I follow the footsteps that he's illuminated, he's already gone into my future and going to make it a success if I follow him. The path of the just is that the shining light shines more and more to the perfect day. Uh, Psalm 119 says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Hallelujah. The entrance of your word bringeth light. So I'm going to follow that. Hallelujah. So it says, you've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me. That was like the children of Israel. Pillar of fire by night to keep them warm, and a cloud in the daytime so the sun don't scorch them. Amen. And then when the Israelites, when the Egyptians, I should say, uh, got close to him. <laughs> he stood behind him, stood between the two, and the enemy didn't know they was right up above them, I mean, right in front of them. Man, God protects us, but do you want to be protected? And you have to confess or be in agreement or say the same thing about the situation that the Lord is saying about it, amen. So it says, Lord, you gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. Man, thank God the blood of Jesus has spared us from the harm of our past. Amen. You know, that's the Apostle Paul after he was consenting to the death of Stephen. Once he got saved, he said, I wrong no man. What? He said, this one thing I do, I forget those things behind me. I'm pressed toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. I'm going forward. Keep it moving, baby. Keep it moving. I said, listen, I, I, I don't remember all the sin stuff I did. You know what? Because if God forgot it, I'm going to forget it. That's why I don't like to talk to, you know, my old friends who are unregenerated. Because all they're going to do is pull up the past and think it's funny what we used to do, what we did to, no, that stuff, that's buried. I buried that in baptism. <laughs> Amen. I got out the water. I'm walking in newness of life. Now, if you want to talk about the new resurrected Jay, let's talk. Hallelujah. But we ain't talking about the old Jay Gregory. We're going to talk about the new Jay Gregory. Okay, this is, verse 6 says, uh, verse 5 again, you've got into my future to prepare the way and in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. You have laid your hand on me. Hallelujah. You write that in the chat room. Lord, you have laid your hand on me. That's how I'm being kept. Amen. God has laid his hand on me, and he laid his word on me too. Verse 6 says, this is just too wonderful and deep and inco incomprehensible. I mean, when you think about how good God is and how he protects us and how he wants us to walk in victory and be more than the conquerors, it blows our mind. It's just real deep. It's too wonderful deep. Amen. He says, you understand, your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. It blows my mind, but it strengthens me at the same time. I'm going to jump down to verse 10. 
Where, wherever I go, your hand will guide me. And that's the important thing. The Lord will guide us. That's how we're being kept. He leads us and guides us into all truth. He leads us and guides us into victory. He gives us the wherewith all that we need to have victorious. He gives us exceeding great and promises that by those we can be partakers of the divine nature. It can be expressed. You know, what? see, what, what God had in his thoughts, he expressed it through Jesus Christ. And he wants us to read the Bible and see his thoughts, and then we express them. Because uh, John 1.1 1, 1 in the Passion Translation says, in the beginning was the living expression of God, talking about Jesus Christ. And we should be living expressions of God, of God because Jesus is the word. So we should be word-minded. Amen, amen. Right there in the chat room, I'm word-minded. That's how I'm being kept. I'm word-minded, amen. I'm a word person. Hallelujah. So verse 10 says, and for those that just came in, we're in uh, Psalm 139 in the Passion Translation. I'm in verse 10 now. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. See, this is so good. You know, even though we're partnership, we have to understand what God does. You know, uh, Revelation 12, 11 says, We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony, and we love not our life unto the death. But when you break that down, it's saying that we overcome by what Jesus did. The blood of the lamb. We have nothing to do with that. What we have to do with is the words of our testimony. Uh, we are agreeing with what the blood has done in our life and what the sacrifice that Jesus made. Are we testifying? Have we come in agreement with that? So that's what I was saying here. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength, what you did, will empower me. Mm, hallelujah. Listen what it says in verse 13. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in mama's womb, in my mother's womb. Amen. I thank you, God, for making me so mysterious complex. See, we are mysteriously complex. Amen. That's the way God made us. Amen. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. Ooh, you're a bad mamma jamma, as Minister Gloria say. You're a bad mamma jamma. Amen. She got that from Carl Carlton, though. Amen. You're a bad mamma jamma. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. And God knows you. He knows everything. He knows Every hair on your head, when it falls out, when you put some new hair in. <laughs> it says this. Verse 15. You even formed. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. Ooh, that's good. That's not, that's not only our body, our physical being, but when we became Christians, we were nobody but sinners, and now we saved part of the family of God, and God's doing to us what he, what he said he was going to do to Abraham because he's the father of the faithful. He's going to make your name great. That just means it's going to stand for something. People are going to respect you. They're going to honor you. So he takes us from nothing to something. Zero to 60 in three seconds. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We just got to praise your name. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 16. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Wow, let me say that again. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Now, what that means was that God DNA'd us 
who he wanted us to be before we got the spirit of wisdom and revelation as to what he wanted us to be. He put on the inside of me and you what he wanted us to be when he, we were with him. Then he released it to your daddy who deposited it in your mama. Then you was born. Amen. But he already cre created in you what he wanted you to be before you got a revelation of who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be walking and working for the Lord. We no longer work for the devil. We've been, listen, the Bible says we've been delivered from the power of darkness. We're no longer in Satan's family and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. We're in a different kingdom now. That's who the real me is. That's the, who the real you are. You're part of the family of God. Amen. Ah, uh, you saw who you created me to be before I got a revelation on it. You knew who I was supposed to be. You know, like I was saying the other day, uh, God had to tell Jeremiah who he was. I ordained you a prophet when you was in me. I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. We had a relationship. So I'm the one that's ordaining you. I'm the one that's keeping you if you want to be kept. Mm. It says, listen, you, I'm in verse 16. You saw who you created, created me to be before I became me. Before I ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Listen, before you stepped out of your mother's womb, God, he wrote your life assignment. He knew every step you was going to take before you even got the revelation. Before it even entered into your mind, you were going to do that. God knew you was going to do it. Man, that's some deep stuff. And he wrote it down in the book. You know, that sounds like Deuteronomy 30, 19. I'm recording this day. I'm recording. You know, uh, <laughs> I had a loop recorder in my chest. They had to put it in. And it recorded some functions in my heart and so on and so forth. And so what God is saying, I got a loop recorder on you. Before you were born, I put a recorder on the inside. I know everything before, I know everything you're going to do, everything you think, everything you're going to say before you do. Man, that's good. And then he says, if it's wrong, I'm going to lead you to right. Did you get that? God loved us so much. If we're wrong, he's going to lead us to right. If you submit, if you want to be kept, we kept by the word of God and making his word our word, we get in harmony with him. Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? The Amplifier says, unless they make an appointment. And for all those who were watching tonight, you made an appointment with God. And your appointment should lead to being in agreement of how he loves you and how he wants to keep you and all that he's afforded you to be kept. Okay. Verse 17 to 18. Every single moment you are thinking of me. This is good. I mean, God is, we always on the line. What, what is it that you love so much, man so much, that we always on your mind? That's in Psalm somewhere. I don't know. I just remember. You love us so much, we always on your mind. Every single moment you're thinking of us, how precious and wonderful to consider that. You cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. Man, God loves you. And he wants you to be kept. And he'll keep you. But you have to be in agreement. I want to be kept. Like you want to keep me. 
Amen. <laughs> you know, this is a crazy time, but you know, God won't be your sugar daddy. But you have to be a sugar baby. <laughs> Amen. God, you know, that's how good God is. He says, listen, I, I, I'm going to provide everything you ever need. I, I'm going to give it to you. I've already given it to you when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. Um, I've already given it to you. And I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask to think according to the power that works within you. If you believe this stuff. Amen. I've given you everything you ever need. This is the victory that overcomes the world. You got to believe it, even our faith. You got to be fully persuaded that God wants you kept, but you have to be in agreement that you want to be kept. You want to believe all your needs are met, even in the face of a shut off notice. You have to believe that somehow God's going to work it out. Amen, amen, amen. Verse 23, I'm just skipping down. God, I invite you. No, God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. See, listen, if you want to be kept, if you really want to know what keeps us, it's giving God access. He goes down into the deep parts of us that maybe we haven't given over to him. And he shines some light on and says, oh, I need, okay, I do need to repent in that area. I need to start speaking the word more. I need to pray more. I need to love more. I may, I may need to forgive more. I may need to get up off my bed and quit watching online and go to church. <sighs> Maybe I need to give more finances. Amen. Because Jesus said, give and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. 2 Corinthians 9 says, you have, when you give, you have sufficiency. If you give bountifully, you have sufficiency for all things. So, you know, we, we, we're giving him access. God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. And it's not like if we don't invite him, he don't know. But when we invite him, we're saying, Lord, okay, if you find anything that needs to be corrected, I'm giving you permission. Because God knows everything. We just read that. But are you giving him permission to correct what's in error? And that's the problem. You can't hardly say nothing to anybody today that's going to bring correction. Correction means that you're doing something wrong. But you don't want to be corrected. Do you want to be corrected? Do you want a better life? If you do, God is offering it to you. Amen. So I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Now, of course, we're not hiding it from God, but we're hiding it sometimes from myself. And he needs to reveal to us, hey, you got a problem in this area. But unless you invite him to search you thoroughly through and through, you may be disillusioned and deceived thinking you are all that in the bag of chips and you not all that. Because God is saying, even though you're my child, there's some areas you need to mature in. And if you allow God to have access to deep stuff that's hidden, you're going to be a better person. You're going to be so blessed. You're going to be a blessing going somewhere to happen. Hallelujah. Lord, search me. And if there's anything in me that's not like you, I give you permission to remove it. And give me more of Jesus. I'm, I'm doing Ephesians 5.1. I'm following God as, as dear children follow their father. Amen. And that is what really qualifies us to be in offices. You know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, influencing other people, speaking into their lives. Hmm. Have you been delivered so you can help deliver somebody else? You can't give them what you don't have. It's got to be more than a theory. It's got to be practiced in your life. 
Yeah, I can read the Bible. I can read a lot of theory stuff, but it, it's more effective and there's no more anointing when I've overcome some stuff and I'm telling you how to overcome. Like Paul tells us in Corinthians, he's the God of comfort because he went through all those challenges in life and he said God delivered him and comforted him so he can in turn comfort those who are going to go through the same things that he went through. He's the God of all comfort. So God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all of my anxious cares. You know, uh, Jesus told Peter that the devil was going to sift him. And all sifting's not bad. Sifting just means separate. Like God, Jesus says, I'm going to use the devil to separate some stuff you don't need to have. And then he says, I'm going to pray for you that your faith don't fail through the sift test. So are you going through the sifting test? The separation? Because that's what sifting does. It separates. Amen. So put me through the test and sift through all my anxious cares. You know, when we get anxious, and the Bible says, don't be anxious for anything, that means that we may be prone for Satan to show us a shortcut. Oh, baby, no. I don't believe that God do. Oh, the day you eat of this, you're going to be just like him, not knowing they was already like God. See, we have to go through a proving test. That's why the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in the in the God had to give them something to see if they was going to obey free will with their own volition. Are you going to obey me or not? I want, you know, Deuteronomy 8 says, I'll, I'll let you go to the wilderness so you can see what's in your heart, whether you would obey my commandments or not. You know, sometimes God lets us get in a tight spot just to see what's going to come out of our mouth. Are you still going to be in agreement with God when there's extenuating circumstances and contradictory uh, challenges in your life? Hmm, just asking. Just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Verse 24. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on. And lead me back to your glorious, everlasting way, the path that brings me back to you. You know, sometimes our past keeps us from my future. And so what the psalmist is saying, Lord, check me out. See if there's any pain. Is there a path of pain that I'm walking on? And if it is, lead me back to you. So I, can, so I won't no longer let my past keep me from my future. Man, that's good. You know, I don't want my past keeping keep me from my future. Amen. I remember, you know, like my, my dad, Henry Gregory, that dad, you know, man, I had two dads. Say, man, I had my biological Dad, then I had the dad that raised me. And he was sort of an introvert. And we we didn't do a whole lot together, but he loved me. And um, so somebody asked me, well, were you upset that your dad didn't do this, that, and the other? I said, no, I had like four or five uncles that did it. And I wasn't even saved. And I recognized that God met my need. And and I, I got my harvest, not from the field that you would normally think, your own daddy, but my uncles, man, they blessed me and taught me how to live. And, you know, when I was going through, I had my uncles there. And I was able to talk with my uncles on certain subjects. I wouldn't even talk with my dad. I ain't talked to my dad about girls and sex, but my uncles taught me. And they were raw enough and uh, polite enough 
that it wasn't derogatory, but they, they gave me the facts of life. You know, they told me about the birds and the bees. My dad didn't. So we have to not always be mad at somebody because they didn't do something when over there God sent somebody else to do it. So I'm not walking in that pain. I love my daddy. Amen. Hank. <laughs> we call him Gramps. Hallelujah. Gramps was a cool dude. Amen. Amen. So listen, I'm going to finish up with Psalm 23 out of the Common English Bible. We've been talking about what keeps us and we're talking about taking God at his word and making it our own. Amen. Well, listen what the Psalm 23 reveals. The Lord blesses me because it says the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Not that I have everything in my possession, but I have him who has everything. And he, I got a revelation that he is the great I am that I am. Which means that whatever you need me to be at the time you need me to be, and I'm going to be that. Ooh, that's powerful. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Are you in agreement with that? Can you say that? That because you are with him, you'll never lack anything. Now, it may not come on in your season and on your timetable, but it's going to come. You're going to get it in its season. That's why you have to have patience. The ability to have things delayed while you're believing they can happen at any time. Amen. That's what patience is. With patience is always an element of faith. It can happen at any time, but if it don't happen, I'm cool with it. Because I know it is going to happen. Because God has decreed it and declared it, and I have declared it and decreed it. So we're in harmony. Amen. I just don't know the season. But I know he's going to do it. I don't know when or how. I just know he's going to do it. Won't he do it? Right down in the chat room. Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Psalm 23 in the Common English Bible. The Lord is. That's present tense. Not he will be. Not he was. The Lord is. Like now faith. Hebrews 11. 1. Now faith. Not faith was or will be. I believe in this now. I believe I got the title deed, the assurance, amen, the confirmation of whatever God says is mine. I have it now. It may not have materialized, but I got my confirmation number. I got the title deed. I, I'm, I'm assured because God cannot lie. So I'm in agreement with what he says. I understand uh, Genesis 8.22. It says, as long as the earth remain, there's seed, time, then the harvest. Amen. Did you get that? There's a process. But in my mind, I got it now. That's what Mark eleven twenty four 24 says. Whatever, whatever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, and you shall have it. I receive it now. The manifestation is going to be in the future. And I can... Deal with that, because I, I, I see a biblical reference where people believe something, and it came years later. You know, just come to my mind, Abraham, Joseph, Jesus, 42 generations took him to get here. Hey, Amen. That's a long time. They was talking about him coming, but it took 42 generations before he actually showed up. When it, uh, listen, when, when my when my daughter in love Mimi announced that she was pregnant, she didn't look pregnant. But nine months later, little JJ came out. So sometimes things you receive it. She received the seed from her husband, but the manifestation of that seed wasn't evident until nine months later. So you have to learn how to have holding faith. You gotta, you gotta don't let the devil move you off your spot. You got to learn how to hold on, baby. Amen. But hold on with the word. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. I'm making it personal. That's what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I know he's your shepherd. And I know he's your shepherd. And I know he's your shepherd. But he's mine too. The Lord is my shepherd. And I lack nothing. 
He lets me rest. Who lets you rest? Sometimes your spouse won't let you rest. The kids won't let you rest. But he lets you rest. He lets me rest in the grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. We live in a state called the land of lakes. You can go to a lake almost, you can drive 10 miles and find a lake somewhere. He'll lead you to restful waters. He'll, he'll let you sit by the lake and just meditate on how good he is. Verse 3 says, he keeps me alive. Your alarm clock didn't wake you up. God woke you up. Your alarm clock might have been a resource, but God is your source. Because a lot of people heard the alarm clock go off and they was dead. They ain't wake up. So he keeps me alive. And so I'm in agreement with that. And, you know, and I'm, I have gratitude. I'm gracious. Lord, thank you for, for keeping me alive. He guides me in proper paths and proper paths, which means he don't let me go everywhere I want, my flesh want to go. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. There's some places you don't need to go because it's bringing no good service to God's name. You a Christian, you doing what? You do, you doing the holly gully like us? You doing the boogaloo like us? Amen. Now, sometimes, you know, you're not defaming the name of God when you're having fun. But you have to know what path to walk in the limitations you have to put on yourself. I said as a Christian, because we have the Holy Ghost, we can self-impose restraints. And we can put self-imposed uh, restrictions and standards on our life. Amen. And God's not going to do it. You have to do it. You have to do, put some self-imposing. You have to deny yourself. Oh, no, don't say that. I have to deny myself. I want it. I want it. Give me, give me, give me. We have to quit acting like babies. Amen. Grow up. Listen to this. Verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley. Now, listen. What that's telling me? That there's going to be some dark times in your life. He's telling him that. He's telling us that right there. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I'm going to go through some dark valleys. I'm going to look. I'm going to go through some times and some instances in my life where it's going to be dark. And that's when I'm going to have to trust him. Then he goes on to say, fear is going to be there. When you go through the dark valley, fear is going to be there. But he says, and danger is going to be, but this is what it says. I fear no danger. I fear. No, I'm not going to fear. And I'm not going to feel like I'm in danger. Why? Because you are with me. Did you get that? Listen, when, when, when the devil or life offers us the dark valley that we walk through, we don't build no houses there. We don't dwell there. He says, even though fear and danger is going to feel like it's overpowering me, I'm not going to fear, and I'm not going to be in danger. I'm not going to have the attitude, I'm in danger, 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 Will Smith. Why? Because he's with us. Did you get that? And I got to say that. When it looks like it's dark, I put the word on it, which is the light. He's always with us. Sometimes all we have to do is pull pull on it. You know, when, when Jesus says, get in the boat, the Bible says he constrained them to get in the boat. He's going to the other side and went to sleep in the back of the boat. And when the the, the wind came, the rains be, vehemently, they woke him up. You better wake Jesus up. He's on the inside. You better wake that word up. Because sometimes he's sleeping on the inside and you need to wake him up. Shake yourself. He caught on that. Wake him up. Let him express himself. Hallelujah. So even though I walk through the valley of the, the, through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me and your rod and your staff, they protect me. How you, how do we, <laughs> what keeps us? Insulating ourselves with this word, renewing our mind to what he'll do, even in the darkest valley, 
even when there's fear around me, even when that, you know, the world will say this is a dangerous situation, I'm not fearing. I'm not going to I'm not going to subside and and be in agreement with fear and danger. To God with me, I'm one of his favorite sons. Did you get that? I'm one of his favorites. He ain't going to let me go. I'm always talking about the Lord. With long life, he's going to satisfy me because I honor him. He says, you set a table for me right in front of my enemies. That means that sometimes he don't, <laughs> he don't come against your enemies right away because they need to see you blessed because you are being kept by the word. You are showing people what keeps you and then hopefully your enemies become your brothers and sisters in Christ because they see your attitude, your disposition, how you look at life, and how you still loving them when they purpose in their heart to come against you and do you harm. And they say you represent God. You act just like God. They say, well, I want to. I've tested you. I tried you. You still acting like you love God. You still acting like you love me. I, I want to be like you. What must I do to be saved? You know, when, when, when Paul and Silas was in, in jail at midnight, they had the jailhouse rock, the jail cells were open, and the jailer was going to kill herself because that was the, the law, the Roman law. If you lose prisoners, we're going to kill you, so you might as well kill yourself. And Paul says, hey, ain't nobody left. We still all here. And to make a long conversation short, he says, well, listen, I won't be like y'all. Because if it would have been me, I would have ran and escaped. So what must I do to be saved? So listen, that was an opportunity, even though Paul and Silas were in a dark spot, they witnessed and got the jailer and his household saved. So I'm wondering if your reaction to life is ministering to people. Ooh, that was good. How are you handling the dark situations in your life? Are you anxious, frantically, letting the devil lead you? Or are you still trusting in the Lord? I'm just saying. He says, you set a table for me right in front of my enemies. And you got some enemies. The, the Bible is telling us right here, we're going to have enemies. If we do good, that don't mean everything going to go smooth. We're going to have enemies. People don't like Christians. Because we stand for something. Not that we're better than people. But we know that we are citizens of heaven. And citizens of heaven operate different from people in the kingdom of darkness. We just do. We live in a different kingdom. Hallelujah. You ought to write that down in the chat room. I live in a different kingdom. I live a dwell in a different kingdom. That's the secret place. We're in a different place. I'm not like I used to be. Amen. He says this, you bathe my head in oil. That's the anointing. See, when, when you want to be kept and you find out what's keeping you, you're taking God at his word and making it your own, the anointing comes upon you. Amen. And then it spills over and then you can be a blessing to other people. Amen. You are anointed. If you are born again, you are anointed. And you ought to write that in the chat room. The Bible says if you're going to make your boast, make your boast in the Lord. And you are anointed. Say, I am anointed. And that's not arrogant. That's the truth. You are anointed. Your cup is so full it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. How many days? All the days. God's pursuing us every day. Goodness and mercy or faithful love is after me. Paul says, I've been apprehended of the thing that I've been trying to apprehend it. He says that at the beginning, when I wasn't saved, I thought I was going after God and doing what God wanted me to do. 
But then Jesus apprehended me as I was trying to apprehend him. But my knowledge wasn't, I was ignorant of God's righteousness. And so God will apprehend those who are trying to apprehend God, but in an ignorant way. And he loves us so much. Paul says, I've been apprehended of that which I was trying to apprehend. I was going after God, but I was going wrong. And he was going after me, trying to teach me right and how to go after him right. And I slowed down so he could get me. Amen. Hallelujah. That is so good that he apprehends us. Because basically what we're doing is going after life. We're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out life. I was trying to figure out life, but I didn't have really a clue until life found me. Jesus says, in him was life. So life found me. I thought I was, you know, I thought I was doing life. No, I was just existing until life found me, and then I received life. Jesus not only has the life, he has the light that lights every man. He'll light you up too. So yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. Listen, God blessing me every day. Every day I get up, I don't care what the circumstances are. I thank the Lord every day. Amen. Sometimes I wake out of my sleep in the night and just lift my hands up in my bed and just thank the Lord. Because, uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says, he will keep me in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on him. And it's not always favorable circumstances, but I'm going to praise him anyway. Paul told Timothy, there's only two times you have to be instant, in season and out of season. When stuff going good and when stuff ain't going good. When stuff is going good and when stuff is going bad. That's the only time you got to praise the Lord and worship him and submit to him all the time. Don't let the, the, the contradictions and the circumstances of life move you off your spot or off your game. Amen. You got to stay with that word. You got to believe it. Amen. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. All things are possible to them that believe. That's the key element. And if you believe it, you're going to talk it. If you believe it, you're going to walk it. Ooh, that was good. If you believe it, you're going to think it, you're going to talk it, and you're going to walk it. You need to write that in the chat room. I believe it. I talk it. And I walk it. I believe it. I talk it. And I walk it. I know God loves me. I believe that. I know my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe it. And I'm talking about it now. And that governs my life. Because my life is going to move in the direction of my most dominant thoughts. So when I'm doing what I'm doing tonight, sharing this word and reading it, it's not only feeding you, it's feeding the old boy here too. Because the word is a two-edged sword. So what I'm telling you to do and suggesting for you to do, I'm doing it too. I have to do it too. I have to, you know, sometimes, you know, life gets challenging. And, I, and, and I'm sitting back, I said, man, I got to do what I preach. <laughs> yeah. I have to do what I'm asking y'all to do. Amen. I've got to do. There's no two camps. We all in the same camp. Amen. There's not one camp for the preachers and one camp for the lay people. It's all one camp. I got to live by faith too. I have to trust the Lord too. I have to lean my entire personality on the Lord too. I have to forgive too. I have to repent too. I have to bind up the devil too. I have to loose the word and the promises of God over my life too. I know I do it for you. I got to do it for myself too. Hmm. 
So, yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. And I'm going to live forever. Now, it might be a, <laughs> I might be translated to heaven when this body wears out. But I'm always going to live in the Lord's house. And the Bible tells me I'm going to live there forever. I'm living in it now in a fallen world. And then one day when I go to heaven and heaven comes back down here, however you want to, you know, whatever. I'm always going to be with the Lord. Because heaven is, we're going to go to heaven, but heaven's coming down to earth. Amen. It's going to purify the earth again. You know, God washed it one time back in Noah's day. <laughs> so when, when you read the... um 23rd Psalm, God is referred to 11 times. Sometimes, depending on what version, it could be a little more than that. But you always notice that you and I are referred to more than God's referring to himself. Meaning God always is blessing and thinking about us. In this particular version, I, let, me, let me go back and tell you what version is this. This is the Common English Bible. God is referred to 11 times. And you and I are referred to 15 times. Amen. So, so God is, you know, he's thinking about us. He wants to help you. And that's how you're going to be kept because he, go, he can keep you. But the question is, do you want to be kept? And if you want to be kept, you're going to have to make take God at his word, and then you have to make it as your own. You know, when, when God told Mary, you are blessed and highly favored, she said, okay, do your thing then, Lord. But how is this going to be? He said, oh, the Holy Ghost can come upon you. Be it unto me as you have spoken. That's what I'm talking about. When God speaks something about you, give him access. Lord, be it unto me as your word has revealed it to me. And that's what Paul's prayer was in Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and some other places. And I really like the Ephesians 1, 17, 18, 19. I'm praying to the God and Father by Lord Jesus Christ that he would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him that the understanding of your eyes will be enlightened so you would know the hope of his calling. What did he have in mind for you when he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? And it's marvelous. You see, once you come into the awareness of that, the revelation of that, then you can embrace it. And then you can be transformed because that will renew your mind. And now you're synchronized with your spirit. And then you can tell your body what to do. You ain't going to need another bowl of ice cream tonight. Mm. Well, listen, we're about to close out. It's about that time. Uh, there's a couple of ways. If this has been a blessing to you, first of all, share it with others. Because they need to know what keeps us. They need to know the process of being kept. And you know what? You go, It's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to get in the Word. You're going to have to meditate. You're going to have to mutter it. You're going to have to paint it on the canvas of your imagination where it becomes first nature. I see myself victorious. Amen. What's a good day? A good day is when you have success in God. Not a good day because you get up with aches and pains and go through it, and then you come home you do it again. A good day is when you've accomplished something in the will of God. And you have to see yourself as more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. So on the bottom third of your, your screen there, there's a couple ways you can sow. And listen, God has attached a, a promise for everything that you do in the kingdom. You know, Hebrews eleven six says, without faith it's impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of them 
that diligently seek him. So when you operate in any promises of the God, there's a reward attached to it. God want to bless you. He want to show forth his glory. Jesus says, it's daddy's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In fact, not only is he giving you the kingdom, he giving you the keys to it too. You can unlock and you can bind up. Okay, we get ready to close. I'm getting ready to lock this up for the night. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for our audience tonight. I thank you that they realize what keeps them. And they are in agreement with the weaponry that you've given us. And one of the weaponries you give us is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so, Father, we thank you that we're so blessed that we're a blessing to other people. We're ministering out of our overflow. And if there's anyone watching this broadcast tonight that's not saved, just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my old lifestyle and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you did that with a sincere heart, you are saved. And the Holy Spirit now being saved means you've given your life to the Lord. Now the Holy Spirit comes in and he leads you and guides you where you need to go so you can be built up and edified and understand who you are in Christ and what the authority that you really have. Amen. And you can exercise that because he's putting us back in the place that Adam was in before he sinned. That was dominion over everything. Amen. And you can even have dominion over your own, your own body. So once again, you know, we want to invite you out to church, 17901 Collinson Avenue, Avenue in East Point, Michigan, four blocks north of Eight Mile, east off Kelly in a little residential section on the street called Collinson. And, you know, we want you to come on out, be a part of the service, because, you know, even, even though online is good, in person is better. <laughs> Amen. So listen, we love you. Uh, Pastor James, Mimi, Lou James, Pastor Edie, Christina, everybody, we love you. And we hope to see you here, there, in Jesus' name, in person. Amen. God bless you. We love you.